Hey kids, Mr. Floor here, hope you're well. Out and about today on this beautiful early spring day on a bike that I've been uh, looking forward to riding for some time. This is the Brute 500 from Herald, which is a uh, brand new British motorcycle bought in a similar vein, the Fantic Caballero. Do you remember I rode that a couple of years back? And in fact, it shares the same engine with the Fantic as well, a 450cc thumper. It's sort of a um, flat tracker, come brat, come scrambly type bike. It sounds absolutely epic. And I absolutely love it already. Anyway, stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you more about it. So you may remember about a year ago I, read, uh, I rode the little brother to this bike, the Herald Brat 125, the little orange scrambler motorcycle. Brilliant little thing, really loved it. And uh, that was one of those bikes that was basically imported from China and rebadged. Where this bike is different is this is one where Herald actually design, engineer and manufacture it themselves here in the UK. They've got a factory, or a couple of factories I think actually, in the Cambridge area. And they make great play of the fact that this is now a properly British motorcycle. In fact, 80% uh, of the components and parts on this bike are manufactured here in the UK, which is just excellent as far as I'm concerned, being a uh, British bike fan. Now I know what you're thinking, where's the engine from? Well the engine, as I say, it's the same as the one in the Fantic Caballero, that is imported from China. Of course, not all Chinese engines are manufactured the same. This particular motor comes from the Zongshen factory. And not only is it the uh, factory that provides the motor, as I say, to the Fantic Caballero, which is never regarded as a Chinese bike, it's Italian, of course, but it also makes engines for a lot of other established manufacturers, including some of the Aprilia engines, for example. So I like to think it's, uh, it's one of the better power units that you can get from China. It certainly sounds and goes well. But other than the engine, the rest of it, as I say, manufactured, or 80% in the uh, in the UK, which is brilliant. And uh, it's got some really nice little touches as a result of that. Some lovely machining and some engineered parts on here. So before we get into what the bike's like to ride, let me show you around the bike and show you some of those lovely bits and pieces that are on the machine. All right, so let me show you around this bike and show you some of those little trick parts that have been fitted on the machine that just uh, make the quality stand out for me. Let's start at the front, work our way back. So start off with the wheels then. Now if you check these out, these are made by a company, or they're, ba they're badged as Racetech, uh, which is actually a company that seems to be associated uh, with Herald, actually. They're also based in Cambridgeshire and they make a lot of the parts of the bike. So you can see it's got Racetech uh, rims here and it's got uh, Racetech forks that look pretty chunky on there as well. Uh, and these tyres on here, as you can see, these are from Avon. So again, another British manufacturer. These are uh, Avon Road Rider Mark IIs on here. I think uh, um, Herald are quite pleased to get these. Uh, I don't know if they're made specifically for Herald, but certainly um, a good quality tyre anyway. Uh, forks look lovely on here. Um, something I don't like on here actually, having said it's got some quality parts, I don't really like this headlight. This is the same as we saw on the Brat 125 um, and there's just something about it. It's all LED. Um, it probably works okay but if you look at the back of it here it just doesn't, the finish, fit and finish of that light to me lets the bike down because the rest of it is pretty good. So some really trick indicators. If I just turn this on, put the indicator on, there we go. It's got these little uh, progressive flashes on, which uh, for some reason amuse me. Uh, it's got really nice um, brake levers. These are from Hell, H-E-L, um, and these are span adjustable as well. Uh, I think all the brake lines are from Hell as well. If we look at the uh, handlebars, is the uh, instrument display, which I think is, is absolutely cracking on here, in that it's got this lovely machined surround, uh, and you see they've got uh, Herald sort of laser etched in there and a little Union Jack at the top. Just looks like a quality part, I think. Uh, and everything on here just feels nice and solid. Uh, it doesn't feel at all uh, built to any sort of, um, you know, a budget. So that's very nice. Uh, coming back here, let's look at this seat, which I think is lovely. It's a really nice um, cover on here and some nice stitching as well. Uh, and then it's got this bit of uh, carbon at the back, which adds to the sort of flat tracker look that I think looks really, really nice on here. Um, 
The um, the number plate has to be beyond the back of the tyre. That's one of the regulations for bikes in this country. Um, but uh, I think I'd probably put some sort of tail tidy on. But uh, again, it's got those little progressive indicators on there. Uh, coming back around this side, it's got some nice shrouds on the radiator. Uh, interesting, it's got two radiators. Look, this I assume is the uh, the liquid cooling, and that's the well the water cooling, and that's the oil cooler. I assume. Uh, here's that engine that we talked about. Underneath this lovely little tank, nice shape to it. Um, sort of modern retro, I suppose is how I'd describe it. This one obviously is in the black. It comes in like a grey colour as well I've seen on the website that I think I prefer but nice looking tank if you look at the frame on here largely bolted together you see the engine mounts are bolted on there rather than welded and the subframe is bolted on as well it's steel and aluminium and uh, let's look at the welds so here's some welds here look they look like pretty good welds to me no um, no pigeon poo here they look good uh, similarly if you look at the um, swing arm the welds on there can you see the welds are beautiful on there really nice uh, nice bit of work i think getting in the way with the shadow of it but the looking at the swing arm itself it's a really odd design look where the shock is low down in this sort of well not cantilevered design but i've not seen a, a shock quite like that and a and a swing arm quite like that again this swing arm is all made by herald in-house as well and machined um nice foot pegs proper off-roady grippy type things as well as the uh, um, brake and gear levers as well they're pretty good on here the other thing i want to show you talking about machining was the um triple clamps i think that's what they call them uh and the the, um, the top yoke on here, beautifully made. Again, not great in the light at the moment to show you these, but uh, can you see where this has been milled? I hope you can just see the reflection here. It looks lovely. And the same with the lower one as well. Again, all done in-house by Herald. Looks really, really nice, that. Uh, all right, working our way through. What else to say? Uh, oh, the exhaust. Here we go. Again, really nice exhaust uh, with this carbon end can. Sounds kind of cool as well. Really like that. Uh, and then at the back end, uh, we, again we can see this rear Avon tyre and the petalled brake disc uh, so yeah really nice uh, really nice little features on here I think and not a nice put together bike okay so welcome back aboard the machine what do you like to ride then well in short brilliant fun the exhaust on here has an excellent note it has all sorts of pops and crackles on the overrun particularly when you change down gear and the bike feels very sort of uh, I don't know, it reminds me a bit of a supermoto, I suppose. It's that same sort of level of fun. I'll try to describe what it feels like. So from a comfort point of view, I am sat pretty much bolt upright. My legs are at basically 9 degrees. Nice wide handlebars. Seat on here, very sculpted. Keeps you in position. So for my height, 5 foot 8, I find it the perfect size, actually. But I think if you're a bigger person, you might struggle a bit with it because you can't really move around on the seat very much. And the seat itself is relatively hard. But it is comfy. Got these massive mirrors on here. They work pretty well. No vibrations given this is a big old thumper. The view out the back is absolutely fine. Mirrors work well. Switch gear. Very, very basic as you'd expect because there's nothing complicated about this bike. No fancy electronics on here. Not even ABS because this is built under the SVA rules which means it's not uh, necessary to have ABS on the bike. So it's not Euro 5 compliant either. And I think just the lack of some of that electronics makes it more, more fun for it. Handling through here is brilliant. The instrumentation is nice and simple. It's got everything you need on there. Speed of course, proper um, fuel gauge. And it's got a few bits and pieces, odos and so on, that you can um, cycle through as you'd expect. What isn't so good are these idiot lights around the side. Although, I, as I said, I do love this machine surround that it's got. These uh, lights, the indicator lights, the neutral indicator, etc. They're not very bright, so on a bright day like today, you can't really see when they're lit. So that is one criticism I've got about it. Those could be brighter. But they do look good. And, they, and it feels like a quality machine in that respect. Some of the uh, bikes built... To more of a budget just feel budget when you look at stuff on the you know on the handlebars but this isn't the case here it all looks properly nicely engineered i do like that about the bike with the exception of that headlight as i mentioned earlier which does look a bit cheap in my mind suspension relatively firm but it's sort of in keeping with the bike i think in that it is undoubtedly one of those bikes that has that thing that we call character and I don't mean that in a bad way in this case because it feels well put together it doesn't feel like the bike's about to fly apart on you or anything like that 
but you definitely know you're on a motorcycle this big old uh, 450cc thumper lets you know it's there anyway talking of the specs and numbers let me talk you through the specs now all right let's talk specification on this bike then and as ever i've got it written down so don't make any errors although there's no guarantees you know me right let's have a look then starting off uh, with this engine that we talked about single cylinder 450 cc water cooled unit puts out 42.9 brake horsepower at 9000 rpm and 40 newton meters of torque so a right old thumper quite a big capacity and as i say built in the uh, zongshen factory in china which is one of the better manufacturing plants as i say it uh, has a partnership with piaggio and makes many of their engines including uh, some of the engines for some of the so uh, some proper engines come out of that plant so don't be put off by the fact that engine is sourced in China okay coming around to the to the brakes here we go there's the uh, there's the single disc on the front here uh, and these brakes they describe as a hell performance front braking system as I say no ABS ring on there as you can see um, and uh, a nice looking um, looks like a four pot caliper on there badged herald as well again really lovely bit of engineering by the looks of it now let's have a quick look around the back brake and we've got a uh, is that a single pot caliper and that's uh, a Huahuan <laughs> caliper as well we've seen those before can't remember i think they make uh, brakes for mountain bikes if i'm not mistaken uh, anyway so that's the brakes suspension wise uh, it's got uh, adjustable race tech fork on here uh, this is a chunky looking fork on here i'm not so sure what that diameter is but it certainly looks pretty chunky and up the front here we can see we've got a level of adjustment as well in the tops of the forks um, so they look good uh, let's talk about seat height 835 millimeters that seat believe it or not which sounds quite tall it's quite tall but i can get my feet down easily at five foot eight because this is a very slim bike if you look at the sort of waist of that you can get your legs down dead easy on that no problem at all uh, tank capacity on here 13.5 liters uh, expect this to be very frugal indeed being a single uh, cylinder bike at the moment i'm according to the um, trip on the machine i'm getting something like 79 miles per gallon out of it which is absolutely incredible the weight of the bike 145 kilograms that's dry uh, it certainly feels really really light when you're, it's so easy to live with this bike moving it around the garage when you're riding it it just feels light and flickable i love that about the bike it makes it a lot of fun to ride uh, the price of the bike 6950 and it comes with a two-year parts and labor guarantee which includes rac breakdown as well now what else to tell you i suppose the only other thing to say is it comes in well at least a couple of colors i can't really work out all the color schemes available but i've seen the gray one on the website and of course this one's black so it comes in at least those two colors all right that's enough about the spec let's jump back on so welcome back aboard the uh, brute 500 and what a great fun bike this is these this sort of capacity bike i love for this blasting around the back roads like i'm doing today you can uh, basically thrash it everywhere and you're not going to get into ridiculous speeds but it's got just enough power to have fun this it's not a bike i necessarily want to go touring with or stick the missus on the back but if you just want to come out for a blast on a Sunday afternoon, well, difficult to beat this sort of fun hooning around. It is very sort of supermoto-esque, I suppose, in regards to the visceral feel you get off the bike. And to me, the things that uh, are most important about motorcycles, maybe I'm getting old and sentimental, but it's not the, the figures and the specs, but it's how they make you feel to ride. And this one just puts a grin on your face. To me again comparing it to the Fantic Caballero I actually prefer this I think one because it's British and not Italian that's just a that's just me but to me it just feels like a, a more quality machine it just feels more planted when you ride it it really is a great fun machine let's just test the brakes because I haven't done that there's nothing behind me let's just try the front brakes I find not not grabby or anything you have to give them a bit of a heave, but they work all right. Nice brake levers from Hell here as well, H-E-L. Let's just try the rear brake. Yeah, rack brake's fine. So yeah, no issue with the brakes. And handling-wise, it, it, it's lovely. It's, uh, it's so light, this bike. Possibly the, the lightest 450 I've ever ridden. Makes it very, very easy to live with moving it around your garage piece of cake so quite a good turning circle on it and for me with my aging bones and aching shoulders no issue living with this machine great great fun so how will I sum up the uh, Herald Brute then well in three short words I love it 
it's brilliant bags of character loads of go great sound looks good feels like good quality and at the price an awful lot of bike I recommend it to the house if you're interested in this sort of machine and you're looking at this end of the market do check out the Brute 500 you could do an awful lot worse I can tell you so thanks to Bill for watching the video once again do leave your comments below always love to read them let me know your thoughts on the bike and also I'd love to know you know at what point you regard a bike as British as I say this one 80% built and parts manufactured in Britain so as far as I'm concerned that makes it as British as a Triumph or a CCM love to hear your view on that thanks to the guys at Herald for loaning me the bike I look forward to seeing what else they come up with soon in their new factory in Cambridgeshire and if you're a new viewer to the channel thanks for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button it'd be great to have you along on the next video right well, that's it for this time look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the Mist and Fly cheerio Thank mm -hmm. you.